Hello friends, welcome back to another episode here on the channel. I hope you're all doing great. And for anyone new to the channel, my name is Lee, also known as Osiris. In today's episode, we're going to continue on with our VGC Series 9 content featuring another brilliant team from one of you fine viewers. And today's team is actually provided by Stu. So thank you so much for the team, Stu. Big shout out there. He actually provided the team over on our Discord server. And if you're not a member of the Discord server, come on, hop over, join the community. It's a great place. We have weekly tournaments going on and a lot more. So do get involved if you want to. Um, obviously, the link is down in the description. Shameless plug there. But getting on to today's team, it is a very kind of unique team. We've got some kind of the, the fundamentals in there, common fundamentals that you see in a lot of these teams, the Sun teams in particular. You've got the Charizard and the Venusaur and then that Torkoal mod, which is just one of the most threatening mods that we've had in Sword and Shield. We all know, all know how that functions, but it's the Trick Room mod that's a little bit more innovative and a, <laughs> really threatening as well. And it's good to mention as well that Stu actually piloted this team to a top 10 finish in the previous ranked season. So this team really powerful and he's had a lot of success with it as well. So hopefully if you do take it on and give it a try, you'll have a lot of fun and also replicate that success because the team is interesting. And obviously the elephant in the room is obviously going to be that Galarian slow bro there. It's going to be the main trick room setter and, and kind of the tool that you're going to use to uh, activate the weakness policy on the Reggie Rock, which is going to be one of your other kind of mainstay trick room um, big threats that you want to get onto the field as soon as possible. The Indeedy there makes sense, obviously, with the safety goggles there, the redirection with follow me, the psychic terrain, which really helps set that trick room up for the slow brawl. And especially because you've got the slow brawl with the psychic, so you kind of given that special defense boost, which really does help it out in the current format. And obviously, got the talk hall which can also come in and perform pretty well in a trick room environment so there's the team as always we'll have a couple of games with it now we'll kind of see how we can pilot it see what mods we can get going against the opponents we've got today and then we'll wrap up with the rental at the end so friends thank you so much for tuning in today's question i've got for you is what would you like to see obviously series 9 is coming to an end soon what would you like to see for the rule set for series 10 now in my mind in a perfect world We'd, we'd have Little Cup. We were talking about it the other day on the Discord, but I don't think that's going to happen. I think I personally would like to see a, a new ban list introduced or a restriction list for Series seven, uh, series 10. I think it would be a lot of fun going into it where we're not having access to all of these these really powerful Pokemon and we have a little bit of a mix-up with the, the format for the next couple of months. I think that would be really cool, but we'll see where it goes. Nothing announced just yet, but it would be great to hear your opinions, so do drop them down below in the comments. And if you do have rental teams uh, that you'd like to see featured, drop them down in the comment as well. We've got a bunch uh, that we've had submit that we'll be playing next week and probably into the week after as well. So big shout out to everyone that has done that so far. And without further ado, friends, let's get into today's episode and into our first game. Okay, first up today, we have a team of Reggie Alecki, Garchomp, Salamence, a Grimmsnarl, Turtonator, and Metagross. So, uh, quite a unique team here, especially with the Turtonator. Obviously, three dragons in here as well. Not something that you commonly see, um, but you've got combinations that straight off the bat that we can identify. Obviously, the Salamence there with the Metagross, the Bulldoze, weakness policy combination. It's going to be a bit tricky. And obviously, the Turtonator are going to be one of those Pokemon that can uh, go for the Iron Defense, but body press combination set up in a trick room environment that can take advantage of uh, that field condition if we go for it because on face value my opponent does struggle slightly if we do get the trick room up especially if we can kind of get a good board position with something like Reggie Rock and Torkoal next to each other um, there's not really too much my opponent's got to kind of counteract that they've obviously got the Grim Snarl there with the light screen support and um, probably maybe even lag and tail and things like that that we've got to just keep in mind and, and be aware of uh reggie alecki going to be one of those fast defensive threats as well that we don't really want to be toying with too much um so i think we'll go the trick room route the other option is going for something like charizard you know um but the reggie alecki makes that a little bit difficult venusaur could be a good option here but the turtonator scares me a little bit so i think i'm going full trick room mod here uh, with the Torkoal Reggie Rock in the back. And we've got a pretty seamless setup with the, the Slowbro and Ndidi. Um, there's no imprison threats on my opponent's side of the field. Uh, it's just going to be difficult, I think, to break down and be patient around the screen support if we do see that Grim Snarl come out. Uh, turn one here, which I'm kind of expecting because I think against when when a team has like discrepancies against Trick Room in particular, I think it makes sense to lead something like the Grim Snarl that we're seeing here. Um, and obviously the Turtonator coming out as well. Going to take the, the opportunity to go for that 
um, iron defense as soon as possible. Uh, so let's see what we can do. What can we do? I mean, it's not. It's going to be nice to get the Reggie Rock in as soon as possible, but the problem is. Obviously, that iron defense is going to be a huge issue. There is a part of me that thinks, do we just expanding force? Double expanding force here. Because I think the Grimmsnarl is kind of tied up this turn with uh, getting the light screen up. Um, and I think a double expanding force onto something like the Turtonator could be really useful just for getting damage onto the field like early on. I know we're not doing anything to the Grimmsnarl, but right now it's not really posing a massive threat to us. And this is what I mean, like the Iron Defense coming out, we don't want the Turtonator to get kind of carried away. And if we can put it in range... Uh, what, what's its Grimmsnarl going for? Is it just going for... Uh, it's definitely got the lagging tail. Oh, there we go. You see, getting rid of it there nice and easy. So this is what I mean. Like, we get rid of that, and now we've got the opportunity. Yeah, they've got the lag and tail for sure. Now we've got the opportunity. That actually helps us out as well. We'll get into that in a minute, that special attack drop. Yeah, we've got the opportunity now, like I say, to not worry about the turn air in the trick room because that's kind of the biggest issue for us. Um, so we can pull the trigger now on the trick room, got that follow me trick room set up. And then get Reggie Rock onto the field as soon as soon as possible. So Salomon's going to come in, um, and we are just going to click. I'm always in the way of these last few buttons, like these last few moves. But there we go. You can see the move set there. That we've seen it on the the team preview, and uh, we'll just go for. Do I worry? Ah, uh, I don't know what the Salomon's is going to do. I kind of want the Indeedy to drop now. That's the big thing. Like I want the Indeedy to go down. So we can get the Reggie Rock onto the field. There's the light screen. Yes, we expected that. Okay. Rock slide. Okay, it's a nice way to try and prevent the trick room for sure. Um, but we do get it up, which is always useful. And I, you know, honestly, I think we've got a pretty e good way to. Um, Let's go for the sh shells. Uh, let's go for that. I mean, are we even worried about the Grim Snarl at all? I do worry when the Psychic Terrain leaves the field, but I mean, if we've got the Indeedy in the back, we don't need to worry about that too much. Let's uh, shell side smash the um, Salamence, and let's switch into Reggie Rock. Get that quick draw activated as well, which is always nice to see, uh, even though we are the slowest thing on the field right now. We'll get the Rock in. And uh, ooh, let's not see the Metagross. Please, no Metagross. That's Reggie Alecky, okay, that's good. If it was a Metagross, we'd be like, <laughs> great switch from my opponent, but we do some big, fat, nasty damage to the Reggie Alecky and get the poison on it as well, which is amazing. Set ourselves up perfectly for this next turn where we can go for that Surf Max and just start getting rid of stuff. Um, and I'm really not worried about anything now. Uh, yeah, we'll go for that surf, and we'll go for the rock fall. Uh, we just max knuck. I think we probably take the opportunity to max knuckle into the Aleki. It's so low health at the minute. The plus one attack boost would be great. But you can see how, how quick that team falls apart without that Turtonator, which is my opponent's really own way, uh, only way to get around the trick room. So very good game to my opponent. But um, I think the the call early on to go for the double expanding force rather than. Uh, kind of committing to the trick room uh, so early on knowing about that kind of threat that it could pause later on in the game because yeah with the light screen up obviously it, it, it would be super difficult to deal with especially if it's got like a double iron defense behind it and um, so yeah nice quick easy one for us to get into today and uh, without further ado friends we'll get into our second match of today's episode next up today we have a Grimmsnarl, Sylvian, Tapu Fini, Spectria, Metagross and Galarian Moltres team so phew, there's a lot of bulky Pokemon on this team lots of big threats as well uh, you can kind of see some of the combinations jumping out straight away you've got the Spectria with the Bulldoze potentially there with the Metagross weakness policy um, you kind of indicate that the Tapu Fini is probably calm mind, especially with the screen support and then the Max Steel Spike support from the Metagross just to kind of bulk it out and that's a, a route for my opponent to go down. Spectre going to be difficult for us to deal with, of course, uh, just because that and the Moltres, they do have kind of the spread damage between Fiery Wrath and Snarl and Taunt and things like that, which can be a little bit... Uh, 
awkward to play around and obviously with the Sylvia in there as well there is always the yawn threat um, and putting our Pokemon to sleep Grimmsnarl is Grimmsnarl so I think we go down a trick room route because I think if you kind of identify a board position for us in particular it's Reggie Rock and Torkoal if they're out on the same like on the field at the same time we've got the weakness policy boosted and we've got Torkoal kind of protecting the Reggie Rock from something like the Metagross I think we're in a position where we can kind of sweep through. The only worry for me would be something like the Tapu Fini, you know, uh, whereas that that kind of pulls in the fact that Venusaur could be a decent option here as, as well as the Charizard. But I'm pretty keen to go down a Trick Room route and hope with the with the um, the Psychic Seed that we have on the Glaring Slowbro, it should just give us enough um, to take an attack like the Fiery Wrath from the Galarian Moltres and allow us to get that Trick Room set up. Because I think once a Trick Room's up, my opponent doesn't really have the options to deal with the big threats that we've got and we've got to just take advantage of those Trick Room turns as much as we can as soon as we do get that set up. So we're seeing Spectria and Grimsnarl. It's a pretty good lead for us to be honest. Like We have to worry about Snarl but at the same time, I think with the Indeedee support, we got some nice options here. Um, we want Indeedee to kind of drop as soon as possible. That's a big thing for us. But, I mean, once we've got our Trick Room up, we can kind of maybe dish out some damage before um, switching in something like Reggie Rock. anyway. Uh, do we follow me? I think there's no way they Shadow Ball. But do I even want to take the risk of that? I kind of don't want to take the risk. Because there is always the opportunity where we could re really ball to here and say, well, they're not going to Shadow Ball because of the redirection that we got. And we could expand in Force and Trick Room, but there's always the, the chance that they taunt into the slow bro as well, um, which would make things difficult. So yeah, we don't even need to take the risk here, you know? We just go for that. Follow me, it's consistent. We know it's gonna work. There's no point of, of playing around where we don't need to. Light screen come out from the Grim Snarl, as we expected, and this is a snarl. Okay, so we could have got away with an expanded force, but you know, at the same time, maybe not super necessary. Um, I think, I think, I think, I think, I think, I think we get the trick room up. I think we go after the spectre here, to be honest. Um, we just redirect again. I don't think we redirect again this time. We go shell, search, smash, and we'll go for an expanding force into the spectre. Now the the light screen is up, but. The, sh the side shell smash, which always feels like a mouthful to say, uh, should do decent damage to that Spectre. Once that's kind of down, it gives me a little bit more confidence of being able to switch in the Reggie Rock, where we're not going to take like an absolute ton of damage in the process. And I think that's the one thing we want to try and avoid. But at the same time, we've got to keep in mind is like this turn where we're not... Um, Getting the Reggie Rock in, you know. Do we get the poison? No, we don't get the poison. Spirit Break coming out. We want the Indeedee to kind of drop. Yeah, we're wasting Trick Room turns is what I'm essentially saying, you know. There we get the Expanded Force, which is always useful, but minus two, not going to be hitting super hard anyway. Uh, <sighs> brutal. Snarl coming out again. Dee, we need you to go down. Um, okay, well... Are they going to snarl again? Maybe. Maybe they go double up into the slow bro here. Mm. Let's go for a shell side smash into the grim snarl. Um, and I guess. Let's just try and redirect a spirit break. Because I'd rather not lose slow bro here and have like the surf. Uh, like accessible the next turn although there is always the argument where we, you're like well you're minus two you could probably switch in Reggie Rock now take the surf pretty well and kind of set yourself up for the next turn but at the same time I really would prefer to get Reggie Rock onto the field is in uh, best healthy condition as possible you know Grim's not going to switch out what's going to come in it's going to be Tapu Fini which is not going to enjoy taking that uh, side cell smash um, we've got the redirect here. A worst case scenario for us is if they click that Shadow Ball button, but I'm pretty sure they're just going to click Snarl. So, 
He has that free damage into the Finny, which is, yeah, huge. Nice, nice fat damage. That's what we like to see. And there's a Snarl. Finally taking down the Ndidi. Like I say, we've not got many turns of our, our Trick Room left, but it's the, like we need to take advantage of these turns um, going forward now. So, Grimnir boost. Do not mind about that. I don't expect the Spectre has got Protect, so we can either pick up a knockout on it this next turn or kind of force the switch to get rid of that boost. Um, and Reggie Rock can kind of come in and do its do its thing. Do its thing. Got to worry about the Tapu Finny as well, you know. Um, we'll surf here. Max. We got Max Quake into. It might be better at Max Quaking, although. <sighs> yeah, we'll go Max Quake into the Spectria. That will be enough to get it. There's no light. Uh, there's no reflect up at the minute, which is always useful. Um, and then we'll concentrate down onto the Tapu Finny the next turn. You've got to worry as well about the Finny maxing itself, but I think it probably wants to take a turn to um, set up a calm mind before it maxes or commits to that kind of route. The issue is my opponent's done an amazing job of you know, stalling out these Trick Room turns, so we, we're kind of limited with the amount of turns that we've got left to utilize. So we've got to be very kind of precise with picking up knockouts now. We've got to pick up a knockout here. We've got to pick up a knockout on that Finny the next turn. Like, ideally, the Finny protects this turn. That would be incredible if we see that, you know? Um, but we're not going to see it because it, it looks like it's going to max. Or is this the Spectria? I mean, if it's the Spectria, it is. Are we going to have enough with the... Plus, oh, I don't know if we're going to have enough now. This is where Max Rockfall would have been the play, you know? If any protects. Okay, so that's good. So we've got a target next turn at least. Quake. I don't know if that was the play. I didn't expect Spectre with so much damage already kind of taken. I didn't expect it to max. I really didn't. But if we get the KO, that's the game gone. But I'm very hesitant to whether or not this is going to be enough. Plus two. Ah, pleasantly surprised it is enough. Okay, well that kind of feels like it locks the game up for us pretty much because now we've got the that KO onto the, the Finny the next turn. We can double into that slot. Even if the Grim Snarl comes in now, gets a reflect up. Um, we'll be able to pick up the knockout onto it. Ooh! <laughs> Get the salt out, ladies and gentlemen. That's a bit unfortunate. Yeah, you know. I mean, this team, it has an effect on people, obviously. Um, it's and we just just I just want to finish a game to, I just want to finish a game today. We're gonna to have one more game, friends. So I will say good game to my opponent. You never know what could have happened. They could have had internet issues, whatever. Their switch could have powered off. Who knows? We're not gonna make assumptions, but there is that slight assumption that you kind of do fall on in these situations. But like I say, let's be sportsman about it. Sportsman like about it. That's what we're gonna do. Good game to my opponent, and we'll hop into our third and final game of the episode okay for our third and final opponent of the episode we have a lichen rock tyranitar dragapult cobalion uh spectre and whimsicott so pretty interesting team you've got kind of shades of kind of beat up combinations in here with the whimsicott cobalion and the dragapult cobalion as well uh, and then that sand core which is going to be tricky to deal with of course but the one thing you can like say straight off the bat is like this team definitely struggles against Trick Room if it goes up, you know. Uh, you've got the Tyranitar that can perform pretty well in a Trick Room environment, but otherwise it's going to be pretty tricky for my opponent to, to kind of deal with. So it's whether or not we want to kind of commit to that early on or not. Because um, you can imagine Tyranitar Lycanroc coming out and you've got to contend then with the Double Rock Slide and can we get the Trick Room up in that kind of space or do we go maybe something like talk of venusaur um and utilize venusaur a little more with maybe a trick room mode in the back or maybe a sun mode in general it's just a dragapult really makes it quite difficult to uh, utilize venusaur you know mm. 
Charizard isn't bad, but obviously against the, the kind of rock. I'm going to go Trick Room mode, and I think we'll go... We'll forego Venusaur altogether, and we'll just go ham onto the Trick Room mode. Get the Trick Room set up. Kind of dodge these. Double Rock Slide. Shenanigans. And also with the redirection, you got to think, with Beat Up being present in my opponent's team, at least with the redirection, we can kind of... Some, to a certain extent, mitigate the beat up kind of potential my opponents got access to. Dragapult, Cobra Lion. Okay, well, that's not the worst. It's not so worst. We really want to get the Trick Room up, follow me, and indeed he drop here. That's like, that, that would be the big plus for us. Get Regirock, Torko onto the field as soon as possible. Or Regirock, you know. Regirock isn't going to be too bad, especially with Max Quake that can hit in the uh, Cobra Lion for pretty decent damage as well. Um, ba -ba -ba -bum. Trick Room for sure, and that Follow Me, I think, is what we're going to go for. Because we can't allow the Dragapult to get a beat up off. We just cannot. I like that might be the thing for the next turn. Like, if we do get um, Reggie Rock onto the field, because the Cobra Lion's the, the one that's going to max here. Uh, we need to make sure that that beat up option is removed ASAP. So, going after the. The Dragapult isn't a bad option the next turn if indeed he goes down here, which maybe there is a possibility, especially with the Cobble Lion kind of maxing in this scenario. So, follow me. It's Dragapult doing beat up. There we go. You do see it. Trying it. Cheeky going for it, mind, in front of, like, you know. And like, there's no reason not to as well at the same time because you punish us for not redirecting here when we got the option to. So, yeah, you can see why my opponent's still going for it. And the damage isn't too bad. Max Steel Spike, not really the... Um... Oh, we survived. We survived. That's not what we want to see. That's not what we want to see. Because the Cobble Line now going to be able to get the knockout onto us. And then the beat-up's going to happen. And then the Cobble Line's going to get way 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 too out of control which means our kind of hands forced almost to go down a uh, maybe uh, a tall call route could we get tall call in for free now potentially and just have Reggie rock tall call combination or do we just go for some residual damage. I think we just expand and force, get some damage onto the field, try and set up, yeah, and go for redirect again. Like, there's a part of me that thinks getting Torkoal onto the field now is probably the best part because you can't deny that beat up. It's expand and force not really going to be doing. I mean, it does nice damage to the Dragapult, right? The other option there is going for maybe a double expand and force. Which we kind of, like, I've really kind of just missed the opportunity to do that. So, real bad mistake on my behalf. I don't know why I didn't contemplate that. And I think, yeah, that is a big, big, bad, bad, bad. Okay. I, I think my I, we've been let off massively there. We've been let off massively in this situation. Um, Now we get Torkoal onto the field because I don't think it's a great idea to bring in Reggie Rock in this situation. They've got the Max Steel Spike already kind of set up. We've got the opportunity to go for Expand and Force now into the Dragapult and Eruption, which you're kind of hoping that combination should be enough to get the Cobble Lion along. And then it kind of opens the door for Reggie Rock to come in after that. Potentially switch in for the Torkoal, get the Surf, then Max, and then kind of clear up from there. But yeah. I've got to hold my hands up with that last turn. We made a massive, massive misplay where we should have just double expanded force, got rid of the Dragapult. And I think it's down to me not really, like a, a big part of it is me not kind of, um, wow, that just does so much damage with the, the Chocol. N underestimating the damage from the Slowbro, not thinking that we could get the damage output we needed onto the Dragapult, where we'd missed a knockout anyway if we double expanded force. But you see the damage that we did from... Expanding force from the slow bro was was so much to the Dragapult. So I think if I'd been a little bit more aware of that, that would have been a player that I would have definitely went for. Okay, Tyranitar and Lycanroc coming in. Now the Trick Room up is, is brilliant for us. 
what are we going to see them go for? Um, they can't max anything, which is always good. The worry for me here is that we go for a Surf and we proc a Weakness Policy on that Tyranitar as well. But it might be the only opportunity where we're going to be able to do that. Um... Torko going to be really any use here because the other option is mm. no. I think we go for it. I think we go for it. I think we just bring in Reggie Rock here because it's going to be double Rock Slide. I think or either Rock Slide and maybe a Crunch or a Dark type attack from that Tyranitar into Slowbro. Just got to hope it doesn't do. Yeah, it's not ideal damage. So there's our weakness policy. What's our T-Tar holding? Okay, no, no weakness policy, which is good. Double rock slide. going to be the thing. This is a problem, like... <sighs> Regirock's still taking, like, an absolute ton of damage. Now we're buffeted by the Sandstorm. And we've got one turn of Trick Room left. So... We get the Torkoal in. I don't know how well Torkoal is going to be able to handle these rock slides. Not very well, I don't think. The other option here, of course, you know, that we, we do have is we just rock slide. Oh, we drain punch. Yeah, we drain punch now. We drain punch the Tyranitar and got Earth Power. The issue is, I think, that they're probably going to protect this turn because it's the last turn of Trick Room. But if they do, we'll get the Lycan Rock anyway with Earth, pa Earth Power. Okay. Enduring. But we still want it. We still got a max. So, as long as we can get the Tyranitar with this Drain Punch, because it's not protecting. So, that's kind of interesting. And this gives us a health back that we need. Get rid of the T-Tar, and then we can lock this game up. Well, we haven't maxed yet, but we've got the opportunity to just go for the max next turn. Endure's an interesting one. And I think just for the style points, to end this video off like we want to, we're going to max the Tor Call because it is one of my favorite favorites. And we'll go for a Drain Punch with the Reggie Rock because we, we're not in any, like, we're not in any threat of getting knocked out here. And we don't get to see it. We don't get to see it. our opponent, Georgie, denying us. But very good game to Georgie. And um, hopefully. That is the end. Well, yeah. Hopefully you've enjoyed today's episode. That's all I'm going to say. We'll jump over now. We'll uh, we'll have a wrap up of the episode with the rental code for today's team. Okay, friends. Here is today's rental team. Big shout out once again to Stu for providing us with the team. It's been a lot of fun and the team is fire. Literally fire. I've had a great time with it. And I love the uh, the, the combinations there with the slow bro, the surf with the weakness policy on the Reggie Rock. Uh, the Indeedy there support is so good in like... Like so many different situations especially with the safety goggles and then you've got the sun mode which is just ridiculous and we've seen it have a big impact in today's games where we've had like one player potentially throw the, the switch out the window and one player quit early on and then that last one going right down to the wire but in all games the team's really been very dominant i feel so nice examples of how the team can function and i hope it's kind of inspired you to try this team out definitely give Stu a big shout out down in the comments and um we'll wrap things up there so thank you so much as always for tuning in have a great weekend whatever you're up to friends we'll be having our um x9 draft league stuff coming out so potentially first game will be out um either saturday sunday or monday i don't know which day we we're deciding because both creators who are playing putting their video out at the same time so we'll figure that out and we'll put it up but i'll have um my kind of analysis on my first match video and the draft league in general going up um sometime either today or tomorrow so keep an eye out for that but it's gonna be a lot of fun thanks so much for tuning in friends take care of yourselves as always most important thing ever and i'll see you all for another episode on the channel very soon so until then take care and bye bye